Astronomers have identified a new asteroid about 150 feet across, which is headed our way and may come so close to Earth that it will pass between us and the satellites orbiting in space above us. There's some debate in the scientific community about whether a direct hit is even possible. Most steadfastly say no. This is called 2012 DA-14. They say this will be the closest past of an asteroid in the history of tracking such things. And again, while this pass is supposed to miss us, the experts all say there's nothing wrong with making sure your affairs are in order. An asteroid is on track to make a relatively close call with Earth. Keywords relatively close. In fact, so close that it will uh, come between us and the moon and even closer than major communication satellites. CNN meteorologist Chad Myers is tracking this asteroid for us. Chad, uh, we're talking a pretty short distance, relatively <laughs> speaking, when it comes to space. Yeah, only 14,000 miles. And uh, that's just a little more than the old cars had for a warranty, that 12-month, 12 12,000-mile 12, warranty. So, yeah, it's going to be very close. It's not going to hit the Earth. We already know that. But what it's going to do, Wolf, it's actually going to come between where our satellites are, even the ones that take pictures for the weather, and you have the geosynchronous Earth, the GPS satellites, fly right by the Earth and right out the other side. So it could impact satellites two different times, but that's unlikely. The satellites are very small. This thing's not very big at all. I mean, comparatively, I don't want to get hit by it. It's bigger than two, let's say, uh, train cars put together, about 150 or 160 or so feet long. It weighs an awful lot. It would do a lot of damage if it did hit, but so far right now, it is not going to hit here. February 15th, this is the closest approach. The moon is 239,000 miles away. This thing's only going to be between 14 and about 16,000 miles from the surface of the Earth. This is the diameter of the Earth, almost maybe 8,000 miles would just round it up. There's another 8,000 and there's another 4,000. So compared to the diameter of the Earth, it's going to be way out here flying on by. Now considering that the moon is still another 225,000 miles away, this is a very close brush. And this does come within a few hundred thousand or million miles of the Earth twice a year. What we don't know quite yet is what the Earth will do to this trajectory, to the orbit. Will it bend the trajectory just a little bit so that the next time it comes by, could it be a little bit closer or a little bit farther away? Well, it's, it's difficult uh, to get the complexities of this uh, predicting these objects uh, to the public because when we first discover them, their orbits are so uncertain that we really can't say where in its orbit it's going to be at a particular time very accurately. But as we get additional observations, the uncertainty region gets smaller and smaller and our ability to track it into the future gets better and better. 2012 DA-14 is a 40 meter sized object, you know, about half the size of a football field in diameter. It's thought to be, like most asteroids, uh, a so-called ordinary chondrite, S-type, so-called S-type for silicates. It's uh, going to pass within 4.4 uh, Earth radii of the Earth's surface, and so that's extremely close. It's going to go from south to north very rapidly, uh, but it'll only be observed by folks who in Eastern Europe, uh, Asia, and Australia. It's, uh, it's an object that's extremely interesting because it actually passes within many of the satellites that are in orbit around the Earth. So we're, we're making available to the satellite providers a file of positions of the asteroid as it goes from south to north and makes its close approach on the 15th. And they can take their predictions of where their satellite will be and then do comparisons. How close will my satellite get to this asteroid? And so far, there, there's no problem. When we discover one of these potentially hazardous asteroids, it's always optically, we're using optical detectors. And then if they get close uh, during the discovery operation or shortly thereafter, we get the radars on them. There's two radars, one in Arecibo, Puerto Rico, and another in the Mojave Desert in Southern California. The radars will be uh, aimed at this object, uh, it, not, in, not at the very closest approach because it's not on the right side of the Earth, but uh, they will be observing it a couple of hours later. 
and getting uh, observations not only of, of its position, uh, its range, and, and the so-called Doppler effect, which measures its radial velocity along the line of sight, uh, but it'll actually be doing um, uh, four meter resolution uh, shape modeling. So we'll be able to understand this object uh, down to the four meter level. And so if we can get the radars on them, right after we discover them, then we can nail the orbit for another 100 or 200 years and just run them out and see if there's a problem. If not, put it aside and go on to the next one. Talk about a close shave. On February 15th, an asteroid about half the size of a football field will fly past Earth, only 17,200 miles above our planet's surface. There's no danger of a collision, but the space rock, designated 2012 DA-14, has NASA's attention. This is a record-setting close approach, says Don Yeomans of NASA's Near-Earth Object Observation Program at JPL. Since regular sky surveys began in the 1990s, we've never seen an object this big get so close to Earth. Earth's neighborhood is littered with asteroids of all shapes and sizes, ranging from fragments the size of beach balls to mountainous rocks many kilometers wide. Many of these objects hail from the asteroid belt, while others may be corpses of long-dead, burnt-out comets. NASA's Near-Earth Object Observation Program helps find and keep track of them, especially the ones that come close to our planet. 2012 DA-14 is a fairly typical near-Earth asteroid. It measures some 50 meters wide, neither very large nor very small and is probably made of stone as opposed to ice or metal. Yeomans estimates that an asteroid like 2012 DA-14 flies past Earth on average every 40 years, yet actually strikes our planet only every 1,200 years or so. The impact of a 50-meter asteroid is not cataclysmic, unless you happen to be near it. Yeomans points out that a similar-sized object formed the mile-wide meteor crater in Arizona, when it struck about 50,000 years ago. That asteroid was made of iron, he says, which made it an especially potent impactor. The area was devastated for over 50 miles around. Also, in 1908, something about the size of 2012 DA-14 exploded in the atmosphere above Siberia, leveling hundreds of square miles of forest. Researchers are still studying the Tunguska event for clues to the impacting object. 2012 DA-14 will definitely not hit Earth, emphasizes Yeomans. The orbit of the asteroid is known well enough to rule out an impact. Even so, it will come interestingly close. NASA radar will be monitoring the space rock as it approaches Earth closer than many man-made satellites. Yeomans says the asteroid will thread the gap between low Earth orbit, where the International Space Station and many Earth observation satellites are located, and the higher belt of geosynchronous satellites, which provide weather data and telecommunications. The odds of an impact with a satellite are extremely remote, he says. Almost nothing orbits where DA-14 will pass the Earth. NASA's Goldstone radar in the Mojave Desert is scheduled to ping 2012 DA-14 almost every day from February 16th through 20th. The echoes will not only pinpoint the orbit of the asteroid, allowing researchers to better predict future encounters, but also reveal physical characteristics such as size, spin, and reflectivity. A key outcome of the observing campaign will be a 3D radar map showing the space rock from all sides. During the hours around closest approach, the asteroid will brighten until it resembles a star of eighth magnitude. Theoretically, that's an easy target for backyard telescopes. The problem, points out Yeomans, is speed. The asteroid will be racing across the sky, moving almost a full degree, or twice the width of the full moon, every minute. That's going to be hard to track. Only the most experienced amateur astronomers are likely to succeed. Those who do might experience a tiny chill when they look at their images. That really was a close shave. <laughs>